Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to those online with us today as well. I have a few announcements uh, before we get started with service this morning. The first is today is still the church picnic, even though it is raining outside. We are still having the church picnic. However, it has been moved up to 4 o'clock start time instead of 4.30. Uh, reason for that is the pavilion was scheduled at 6 o'clock for another event, so we kind of have to move ours up a little bit. Um, so 4 o'clock, and then afterwards, Dave Powers is going to be singing. That's the event that's happening at 6, and so he has invited anyone that wants to stay from our church to attend that. Sunday school began today. Um, I want to tell you everybody's back in their normal classrooms, but I do want to invite you to go downstairs um, behind the mini fellowship hall in the classrooms. There is a big room back there. It used to be the yard sale collected all room, and Gretchen has worked really hard at cleaning that out. Um, and we had two gentlemen come in and paint that room, and there's some new carpet and toys, and it's fixed up, and that's for our preschool children on Sunday morning. It's also going to double for our preschool program here, our Smart Cookies. They will be using that as their library space. So we're really excited about that. It looks great. There is a special offering today if you would, uh, would like to um, give money towards the disaster relief option. We are taking those today. I believe there are some special offering envelopes in the back there if you need that. Volunteers are still needed to provide snacks each week for youth group. There is a sign-up sheet out on the BLC desk out there, so I invite you to uh, sign that up if you're, if you're interested. The last announcement I have is if you come into the church during the week, you're going to notice a difference. The doors at the top of the sanctuary and the door down going into the ramp of Mini Fellowship Hall are locked. They are locked because we have a preschool program here and we want to protect our children. So those are going to be locked from 9 in the morning until about 2.30, 2.45 in the afternoon to protect them for their safety. So what that means is you get to go and see Carol's smiling face as you walk through the office if you need to get to someplace else in the church. This is actually a good idea because it does, I mean, not only for the protection of our children, but it gives Carol an idea. She knows who is in the building and where they are. So if there is an emergency, she knows where to get them and who to get. So that will be a change. There are notes on the door, so you will notice that um, if you, in case you forget. And yes, the church staff has forgotten their keys already to take with them, so we're getting our exercise as we do that. All right, I don't think we have any other announcements for today, so let's come together in worship. Good morning. We are small, but we're mighty this morning. You can definitely tell we're still coming off of summer. Um, as we begin this morning, I'd like to start with a reading uh, based on Hebrews 13 and Ephesians 1. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. We were chosen by him according to the plan of him. He who works out everything for the purpose of his will, in order that we, who put our hope in Christ, may praise him in his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit. God has promised us, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. For, For Jesus Christ, Christ is, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. As we praise and worship God this morning, 
Let us praise God and stand firm in the truth that God is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever. Please stand and join us.
power on this earth. Lord, there's freedom in our belief in you. For Lord, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are our helper. And it is because you are here for us that we have no reason to be afraid. We can give whatever burden we have that is holding us down, that is chaining us down. We can give that to you this morning and have freedom in you. We can give whatever our burden is to you every single day. For Lord, sometimes giving to you our burdens, releasing those to you, isn't a one and done. But Lord, it's a continual process. It's a day by day that we take things. And that's why it's so important, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because each day we can come back to you 
we can stand firm in you. And we know that there is freedom, Lord. Freedom of whatever in this life is holding us down, that is causing us anguish, that is causing us pain. Lord, you can take that pain away. And Lord, I just ask that if there's anyone here today who is feeling that burden, that they give that over to you right now. that they lift themselves to you right now. And they just ask, Lord, be there with me. Walk with me. Take whatever it is that is holding me down, that is separating me from you. Take that away from Lord, I give myself to you this morning, my whole self to you. I declare freedom in you. In your name we pray. Amen. From wherever you've been, come broken hearted, let the rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come here. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow.
teaching scripture for today comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 33. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. So, February 15th, And April 1st are two days that are celebrated in the Thorpe household. Can you guess why? It's not birthdays. It's not anniversaries. It's not April Fool's Day. Good guess. Nope. February 15th is the day that the pitchers and the catchers in Major League Baseball report for spring training. And April 1st, or thereabout, is opening day. So that is a day of much celebration in our household. My family, they are diehard New York Mets fans. And uh, even little Jude, my grandson, has a New York Mets shirt. So the Mets are doing well this year, so you can tell that uh, it's a happy household. Now, when I was growing up, I was a Baltimore Orioles fan. Any other Orioles fans here? All right, all right. Um, So I I was a Baltimore Orioles fan because my dad and my brothers were Baltimore Orioles fans. I remember going with them to baseball games. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Well, one day, I couldn't go with them to a game. And so my dad said to me, he said, well, what can I bring you back? And I said, a fly ball. Now, my dad said to me, okay, well, guess what? There was a fly ball waiting for me on the table the next morning. There was. Yep, and that ball even had the scuff mark on it from where that batter hit that ball. I was thrilled, and I thought my dad was the greatest man on earth. He got me exactly what I had asked for. Now, being older and wiser as I am, I realized that my request for a fly ball was really an enormous ask because, first of all, you don't know where they're going to go. You hope to be in that section. You hope to be in the seat where you were or where it's going to land. But then you have 20 pairs of hands trying to catch the ball, too. So, you know, that is really an enormous request to do. But my dad came through. Now, I don't know for sure, but knowing my dad, he didn't want to disappoint his little girl. So maybe he caught the ball. Or maybe he just went and bought a baseball, threw it against the wall, and brought it home and said, here. So I don't know. It doesn't matter. All I know is I asked my daddy for something, and he followed through. Now, some of you may be Phillies fans or Pirates fans or Nationals fans, or maybe I didn't say your team. Maybe you're not even a baseball fan at all. It's okay. So whatever team you root for, and even if you don't root for any, I'm pretty sure you're going to understand some of the terms that I'm going to talk about next. Now, when the game begins, the pitcher on the mound is called the starting pitcher. He's called that because he's one of the best pitchers on the team, and he has earned the right or the place to start the game. 
Now, this starting pitcher is kept in the game until one, either he has thrown so many pitches and they don't like their pitchers to throw beyond so many pitches. So he's either thrown that number of pitches or he's having an off night and he's letting too many runs and hits happen. So whenever that happens, this is what you see. The camera zooms in on the dugout right to the coach and the coach is on the phone. He's calling the bullpen. Then you see the coach slowly walk out to the mound and you know what's gonna happen. That pitcher's gonna leave the mound and he's gonna go back to the dugout too. Now the coach occasionally goes out, gives the, the, the pitcher a pep talk and leaves him in, but most of the time he takes him out of the game. The phone call to the bullpen is where several members of the ball team, several pitchers are warming up. These are called relief pitchers. And they step into the game to finish the game. Now, that person, that relief pitcher, stays in for an unknown amount of time. They could be that there's a left-handed batter coming up, so they bring a left-handed pitcher in to pitch to him. And that's the only batter he sees. And then he's out of the game for the rest of the game. Or that relief pitcher can come in and he can finish the game for them. It does, I, you don't know. It's all up to the coach. And the one thing that is certain is the game must go on. And so the coach is going to use as many pitchers as he needs. Aren't you thrilled with all this information about baseball? Yes. So why do I give you this wonderful information? Because I stand here before you today as a relief pitcher. Our starting pitcher, Pastor Joel, has left the game. The relief pitchers or pitchers, in our case, have been called to carry on the duties and responsibilities of the pastor, of the full-time pastor position, until a new starting pitcher arrives. And just as the call to spring training is a day of celebration in our, our household, we had a wonderful day of celebration last Sunday for Pastor Joel. I think many of you were, were able to be here. He had uh, contacted me the next day, he texted me the next day, and he said, I feel so very blessed by what the congregation had given us and done for us. And he said, I was so jazzed up and excited about the day that I couldn't sleep all night. And so at 3.45 in the morning, I decided to get up for the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does sound like Joel. So what a wonderful day, what a wonderful way that we honored our pastor. So thank you for your part in that. I know there are many of you that uh, played a part in that, so thank you. But as in the baseball game, the game or the story doesn't end with the exiting starting pitcher. We have been instructed by Jesus to go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. The work of the church still continues. It still moves forward. And we go on. Will it be a challenge at times? You betcha it will. But that's okay. Because we learn and grow and we still minister in the midst of our challenges. God doesn't stop working in the church and so there is still so much work to, to be done. I want to tell you this past week, we served 195 meals out the door for midweek meal, drive through meal. 195. That is amazing because in a time when things are faltering all around us, that program is blossoming. And it is really serving a need in our community. And that's God working in us and through us. Did you know in our preschool smart cookies program that there are 18 children in the program 
from this year? Yeah. Only a few years ago, we were contemplating shutting it down. That's God working in us and through us. We as human beings encounter many challenges throughout our lives, health problems, money struggles, broken relationships, the list goes on and on and on. But our God is always there for us and will help us each and every challenge when we turn to God and ask for help. Because God promised us, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. We are no strangers to challenge. The pandemic was definitely a challenge. It was a challenge around the world, and it was a challenge here in this church. Decisions on whether to open or to close, whether to require masks or not require masks. It was tough choices. We wanted to minister to everybody, but you know what? It didn't make everybody happy, the decisions that we made. But that decision still had to be made, the difficult decisions. We faced it. Our church attendance is down a bit. But with God's help, we're going to build it back up, and I know we will. And we're going to continue to move forward because we moved through that pandemic. On Thursday of this past week, Queen Elizabeth passed away. 70 years of leadership. Can you imagine? That is a lifetime, a lifetime of leadership. In his first speech to the nation, King Charles says that his mother was an example to all with her humor, her wisdom, and her love. She was a beloved queen to her people. And our brothers and sisters in Christ across the pond are greatly impacted by that loss. But they'll make it through with God's help. Today is September 11th, or 9-11. I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to remember a day that challenged and changed our, our world as we know it. I think most of us that are old enough remember exactly where we were and what we were doing when we heard the news. When we saw on TV the planes striking the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the field in Shanksville. We watched the news in disbelief that this attack was even happening. The pictures of the rubble, the emergency vehicles and personnel, the pain and anguish on the faces of the people, and hearing the ever-increasing list of those who lost their lives in the attack. It left us with a sense of fear, questioning, and unknowing. What will happen now? We prayed for those who lost their lives and for their families, for the many workers who worked hours and hours on that scene to clean away rubble, looking for those who were lost. It was a painful time for our country. I remember hearing someone say on the news, where was God when this happened? My question to each of us is, where wasn't God in that tragedy and the others? God was busy ministering to those that were trapped on that floor, the floors, the top floors. He was busy ministering to those who were in fear that were in that stairwell. God was with those who lost their lives as well as those who survived or those workers that were there to help. God is with each and every one of us in our disbelief and in our pain. God was through us with us in the pandemic, and he's going to be with Great Britain as it mourns the loss of their leader, too. 
when things happen that challenge us, God is right there with us through it all. I think sometimes the misconception is that if you are a good Christian and you live a good Christian life, your life's going to be easy and pain-free. That's not the promise that God gave us. The promise is, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you always. God works in us and through us during the challenging times as well as the times that, that we prosper. Let's think about the disciples for a moment. Can you imagine how they felt after spending three years ministering with Jesus, then to see him put on trial and crucified? Can you imagine the disbelief, the pain, and the anguish they were experiencing? Can you imagine? Because this was their friend. This was the Messiah they had been waiting for. This was their Lord. Now, we all know what happens next. They had no idea. That was a challenge to them. If they wouldn't have done what Jesus said to continue the ministry, we wouldn't be sitting here today. But their faith and their perseverance to continue the work of Jesus moved them forward and on. When Jesus died and rose again, he came back to his disciples, and these are the last words that he said to them. They were words of comfort, faith, assurance, hope, a mission to carry out, and the promise of help from God to do so. They are words for his disciples then, and they are still words for us today. From the Gospels of John and Mark, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, or the Holy Spirit. The Word cannot accept him, the world, excuse me, cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him because he lives with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And the Great Commission, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you to the end of the age. Powerful, powerful words of promise from Jesus. No matter the challenges or the tragedies we face, Jesus is there with us. The Holy Spirit is in us. If we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit dwells in us, and it's there to help us. That is a promise to praise, isn't it? Amen? Amen. Challenges are difficult things for all of us. It's no difference for us here in the church. Joel's leaving is tough. He was very loved, he was respected, and he's going to be missed. But I also know that Joel will be continuing to pray for this congregation that we continue to move forward with the work of Jesus. Will things look different? Yes, but many things will still remain the same. For now, one of the differences is instead of a senior pastor and maybe, you know, um, an associate pastor or something, there are several of us taking on responsibilities and the duties of the senior pastor. It's a plural 
ministry, plural ministry. I will be taking care of the administration aspects of the church and attending meetings and facilitating the administration aspects. I am also going to be carrying the bulk of the load for the pastoral care. So if anybody goes into the hospital, um, visiting our shut-ins, visiting, my hope is to be able to come into your homes and visit you. I see you on Sunday mornings, and I enjoy talking with you, but there's just something about being in someone's home and visiting with them that is very special. So I hope someday that um, you'll allow me to come to your home. I will preach from time to time. It is not going to be the main focus of my ministry. I'm going to still continue as the minister of music and congregational life, which means I will still direct choir and I'll still direct the hymns up in the first service and I'll still be part of the praise band here. Um, But I just, I just today, for example, I let Phil um, do the hymn directing and the, the choir directing because that boy needs to earn his keep. So we're just, uh, yeah, so I let him do that. But um, I'm going to be doing those things, and it's going to be a heavy load, but you know what? With God's help, I'm going to get through it because I have help. Not only God's help, but I have the help of Gretchen. Gretchen is going to continue to be our youth and Christian ed director. But in addition to that, she is going to be taking on some of the preaching responsibilities and some of the pastoral care. Ian Urban and Allie Toms will be sharing the load of preaching as well. So that gives us four different people that will be preaching. Allie and Ian both have full-time jobs outside the church. So we are blessed that they are willing to share their time to preach to us. Ian will also be helping with pastoral care. In fact, he is going to be working in the office here on Thursdays. Thursdays are my day off. That is my Sabbath day. And so Ian has agreed to come into the office and work um, so that if there are any pastoral needs that come up, He's there. In your bulletin, you'll notice Carol put in there about um, if you have a pastoral need or an emergency, contact the church office. Now, if the church office is closed, it has my name next and my number, so you can call me. If you can't reach me, Gretchen is the next in line. And I forgot to tell Carol, but for next week, we'll include Ian's name in there and his phone number. So that gives you four different numbers to call in case there's an emergency. Now, while this plural ministry is new and a big change to this church, it is not an uncommon thing in the Church of the Brethren denomination. There are numerous churches around that have several pastors that share the load of the, pa- of the pastoral ministry. I think you're going to be in good hands with this group of relief pitchers. Allie has already gone through the licensing process, and she's already done a few interviews for her ordination. So she is moving forward towards ordination. Ian and Gretchen are looking at starting this licensing process in just a couple of months. So they are all on the ministry track, and this is part of the ministry dir- the ministry uh, journey for the licentiates and the discerners. They're called discerners when they first start, be- and then they become licensed. This congregation is also blessed with some retired ministers who I am certain will step in if needed. God will provide someone to be in the pulpit at this table every single week for you. God will not let you down. God will not let you down. Your, ter- your team of relief pitchers have a passion for Christ and a passion for serving the church as ministers. God has called each of us to this time and to this place. 
Listen to these words from Esther. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. The royal position referred to in this passage of scripture is Esther becoming queen. We're not royalty. We're not queens or kings. But I do believe God has called each of us for such a time as this to serve this congregation. And I further believe that God has called you for such a time as this. Because after all, we are all ministers in God's, in God's world. So what does this require of you? That's a very good question. I'm glad you asked it. We will be looking at that in the couple months to come. It's different things, different things to challenge you a little bit. But I can tell you, the primary thing that is required of you are your prayers and your continued support of this church, of its staff, and of the pastoral team. Pray for God's continued guidance as we still are searching for a senior pastor. And pray for patience. That's a hard one to pray for, but pray for patience with us as we travel this new road together. Do you think you can do that? Not everybody shook their heads. Do you think you can do that? Okay, I want to make sure everybody can do that. <laughs> I know you can. Honestly, I know that I won't get everything right. I know that. But I will do my best to serve you and to serve this congregation with love and kindness to the best of my ability that God has given me. I love each and every one of you. And I thank you for your faith and your perseverance, just like those disciples, to continue the work, to get out there in the neighborhood and around the world to help others. So for me, it is an honor and a privilege to serve you in this way. So thank you. Now, this sermon has mostly been about telling you what's happening the challenge we ha challenges we have and the challenges we're going to face, and that the things will look a little different. But I hope that you also received from this message that it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We will continue to move forward, even though we have no idea how long it'll be before a senior pastor is in place. In the meantime, Find comfort in these scriptures. If God is for us, who can be against us? The Lord declares, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God works out everything for the purpose of his will. And all things work together for good for those who love God. This is your family. You were brought here to this place for a reason. This is your flock. Jesus, who is our good shepherd, has welcomed all of us into the flock. And we will continue to encourage one another, to love one another, to help one another, and to serve our Lord together. Amen? Whether it be inside these walls or outside those walls, we're going to continue to work together. God is good. And God has the congregation right here in the palm of his hand. And just like my dad didn't want to disappoint me and not have a fly ball, God is not going to disappoint you. He's not going to disappoint me, and he's not going to disappoint this church. The relief pitchers are in the game now. But God is still the coach, and God is still in control. Amen.
please stand and join us. Even when I don't see it, you work. 
way maker. He's that promise keeper. And God will keep all promises to each and every one of us. You know who God is and God knows who you are. Let your love and your light shine in this world for Jesus. Amen. And go in peace. Thank you. 